God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. My beloved, please like us on YouTube and uh, follow us, okay? Even on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thank you. Today will be part three and the closing of our message series titled Prayer for Revival in Our Churches. Our scripture is 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 13, which will also be our main scripture text as we go into our message today. Now therefore, O God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. God is worthy to receive all praise and all thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this message series. Thank you for bringing us to this point, Lord. We pray that all those that have heard the message series and even hear this message today, that they will check themselves, look at their heart, look at their lifestyle, and seek God through Jesus Christ for personal revival within their hearts and then within the body of Christ. Thank you, Father God, for this blessing today and this message. In Jesus' name as we pray, amen. So my beloved, as you see, our scripture says, Now therefore, O God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. His name is glorious. He is glory. God is above all things. God created all things. He has all things in his hand. He holds the world. He holds every circumstance. He holds life. He holds death. He holds everything, events, in a palm of his hands. So now as we look at our main text today, we see that the people of Israel were gathered together. Now David was passing on the torch to King Solomon. And King Solomon was going to build the temple. And what a glorious temple it was. My beloved, as glorious as the temple was, understand that that was the temple made by hands. But us as humans that belong to Jesus Christ, our body is the temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. And therefore, we must keep it clean. We must respect it, take care of it, nurture it in every way. We must nurture it our body, our minds, and our spirits. My beloved, the praising of God is characterized as an enduring praise, always rising anew from our mouths and spirits. When you wake up in the morning, you should praise God for another day because you have a day that wasn't promised to you. But God, in his infinite mercy, allowed you to live another day. Things just don't happen, okay? God has a plan and a purpose for everything that happens. So know that, my beloved. God has a plan for you. He has something that he wants you to do. Won't you allow him to move in you and through you? I believe you want that to happen. Now, if you don't know in which manner God desires to use you, ask him. Pray. Study his word. And he will reveal himself to you. I want to give you a list of some scriptures to meditate on. And I believe that these scriptures will bring out the points that everyone has in them. Because when we belong to Jesus Christ, we have gifts, we have virtues, and we are to use them for the praise and glory of God through Jesus Christ. Psalm 105 and verse 1 says, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Let people know what God is doing in your life. Give a testimony. Tell other people that they can have the same thing if they only seek him. Psalm 106 and verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord for good, for his mercy endureth forever. Give God praise. Receive his mercy. You received his mercy when you accepted his plan of salvation through his son Jesus Christ. Continue to praise him and thank you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 says, Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make us manifest the savor of of his knowledge by us in every place. We are a walking testimony of God through Jesus Christ. We are a walking testimony that Christ lives within us and that he is our Savior and Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15 says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, that unspeakable gift of eternal life, the free gift through God's grace. It is free. You cannot work your way to heaven. You must believe by faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. But remember that 
In order to be saved, you must repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose again from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And from that position, he shall come to judge the dead and the living. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, For this cause also thank we God, without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. We are a walking testimony that we are Christians. Use your testimony to win the lost to Jesus Christ. We receive because we heard the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You had to hear about Jesus Christ from someone, from an evangelist, from a preacher, from someone, some type of minister, in order to come to Jesus Christ. In closing, allow me to make the following comments. There is a process that God has set into place for revival to take place. The heart is the main place God uses to start a revival. It is a personal event that must take place first. We have to take the gospel, but we can't effectively take the gospel without Jesus Christ living within us. He must live in our heart. We must give our hearts to him that we may be saved. The mind is another place that God uses to start revival. God speaks to a person's mind so as to implant thoughts of revival into it. The spirit is another place that God uses for revival. God moves the spirit of a person while opening the person's heart and mind to his pure motives. God uses his written word to direct people in the right direction concerning the heart and spirit of a person. Beloved, a hunger and conviction is implanted in a person, and this creates a desire for revival. Do you desire to see a change in people's lives, a change in our nation, a change in our leadership, a change in our churches, a change in our towns and cities? Well, pray for revival. Open your heart to revival. Pray without ceasing. Study God's Word. Reveal God's Word to others. Let your light so shine among men that they will see your good works and glorify God in heaven. If you want revival, you must do certain things for revival. You must open your heart, your mind, and your spirit. And when you do this, revival will come. Talk to other Christians. Get in a group. Pray together. Touch and agree. And when you do, revival will come. We don't know when it will come. We don't know how it will come. We don't know by what means revival will come. But we know revival will come. A note on the subject of revival. It is on a personal level first. God deals with you first. God firstly creates in a person the desire to have a personal revival before a person can bring forth a revival in the church. As individuals conceive the need for a personal revival, they will speak with others of like mind about their desires and promote it within a group of other like-minded Christians. Everybody isn't going to agree with you about revival. Some people are status quo. They just go on. They go on. They're happy with going to church, having dinners, talking to people, and leaving. But they don't think about the lost souls. You must have revival in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, in order to have it in the church. Come together with other Christians, like-minded. Pray, touch, and agree. Stand together for revival and revival will come. Through this association with other Christians of like-mindedness, forgiveness, praise, and worship is instituted. Prayer meetings are initiated. Evangelism takes front stage, and souls are one to Jesus Christ. As revival grows in the church, local neighborhoods, cities, states, and eventually the whole country, the minds, hearts, souls, and spirits are changed to the like-mindedness of God and Jesus Christ. It must start with you as an individual. Are you willing to take on this important and edifying task? Are you? Let me ask you that today. Can you answer that question at this very moment? Are you willing to join me and others in this great commanded work by Jesus Christ? Are you willing to join us to take part? You don't have to be in this church. You don't have to be in this city. But you can be like-minded 
and take place with us through prayer because there is no distance in prayer. God will honor your prayer for revival. You touch and agree with us. We are all praying together. If every Christian gets together and prays, revival is going to come. Praise God. Thank God for revival as if it's already here. Continue to pray for revival. Trust God for revival. Get together with other Christians. Seek God. Praise God. Have revival services. Take the word of God out into the local cities, to your neighborhoods. Take the word of God. Be a testimony in your own Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the outermost parts of the world. God can use you through your home. He can use you on the internet. He can use you person to person. He can use you in the church. He can use you in the streets, in the stores. He can use you. Just ask God to use you. Tell me you want to be used. Tell me you want to be a vessel that brings revival. Beloved, if you are, let us all start today drawing to God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Prepare your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Let's all come together in one accord. Send me an email. If you want to join us in this effort to have revival, send us an email at abundant.grace at att.net. I will pray and agree with you. Let me know. Let others know. Tell them we are praying and seeking God through Jesus Christ for revival. Do you want revival? Are you willing to take on this important and edifying task? I'm asking you this again. Are you? Are you willing to join me and others in this great command work? By Jesus Christ, are you willing? And let me hear from you. Talk to your pastor. Talk to other Christians. Pray. Establish prayer meetings. Establish fastings. And watch revival come. Beloved, this is a big world. When revival comes, there will be a powerful move of God through Jesus Christ. Pray for revival. And it will come. Thank you for joining us today, my beloved. This is part three of our message series titled Prayer for Revival in Our Churches. The first Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 13. My beloved, an important point I want to make right now is, do you have a heart for revival? Do you want to see people's lives changed? Are you up to the task? I pray that you are. Are you willing to join me? I pray that you are. Today, let's start with this one thing, with repentance. I'm going to give an altar call to receive Jesus Christ, and I'm going to do that. But there are many of you out there watching this message that have been backslidden, have been laxed in your Christian walk. I want to include you in this prayer today. Because everyone can repent. Not just the lost. Everyone can repent. I have to repent. Every Christian has to repent. Not that they don't have salvation. But when we allow certain things to come into our life to take our time away from God, we must repent. That builds up a wall. That builds up forgetfulness in us as to what our duties are as Christians. First, I want to pray for the lost to come to Jesus Christ. Then I'm going to pray for those that need to repent of their slothfulness, of their loss of duty in their lifestyle. Okay? Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I come before you, Father God, offering up a prayer to all those that have a mind to repent. Father God, I know that there are many out there that need salvation. Please, Father God, convict them to come to Jesus Christ. I beloved, if you hear that voice of God saying, come to me, are ye that labored heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Please come to Jesus Christ. The only way to come is that you must repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. He's now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to re receive Christ today because you believe that, please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, and it touched me. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that is crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. Father, I am sorry for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that through my repentance, my belief in who Jesus Christ truly is, that he has become my Savior and Lord. And when I die, when I leave this life, I will go to heaven. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name as I pray, amen. Now, for those that have been backslidden, please just pray this prayer with me. Father God, in Jesus' name, I have been slothful. I have been falling back 
on my calling. I have allowed other things to come in my way. Trials, tribulation, economy, job, everything else, family problems, marital problems. But I want to repent today. I want to draw closer to you. I want to hear that soft, still voice speaking to me once again. I want to have that time of prayer. I want to study your word to get to know you more and more. So forgive me, Father, today. And I believe that through my prayer, you have forgiven me. And now I can continue to draw closer to you because I realize that I have drawn away from you because you will never draw away from me. And I thank you, Father. Continue to convict me of my sins and draw me closer to you. In Jesus' name, as I pray and thank you, amen. So my beloved, please, if you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, please contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact us on Google or Microsoft. Put in there, abundantgracechurchofmelothian.com. We are here for you. Or you can put my name in, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. But please, let me hear from you. You can listen to us on our local radio station, 95.5 FM and 1650 AM. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. We are, all, we are on the major social media websites. Follow us. Comment, okay? Let us know that you are there joining us in our prayer for revival. God bless you, my beloved. Our message title has been Prayer for Revival in Our Churches from 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 13. Thank you for being with us. And please continue to follow us and like us on YouTube. And we look forward to having you back again with our next message series. Thank you. God bless you and go with God.